Today, you are gonna learn how to crush black with the Trumpowski attack. Members pick the next opening video and let's get started. First, we play pawn to d4 and black tries knight to f6, the Indian game. And are we going to play into a main line and end up hating ourselves? No, we're gonna go bishop g5. The reason we put the bishop on this square is we attack their knight right away and potentially in the future if it ever moves, we would have this pin on their queen, which can get very annoying. So the question stands, what will black do here? Their most common try is e6, but is it the best one? No, because we can now play e4, and on move three, we have a massive center. And from here, they have two main branching points. They can go bishop e7 and try to undo the pin, or h6, and of these two, which is worse? Probably h6, because provoking the bishop is just kind of unnecessary, and after this trade here, we go c3, and already we have an advantage. Why? We have a very big and solid center, our development is easy, and their queen is just pretty awkward and here after like, let's say d6, we can go bishop d3, bishop e7, knight f3, our life is easy, we can castle quickly, development is great, and who knows, if black just castles here, already e5 and their queen is trapped so already a lot of venom in this opening it is very powerful back here if they try instead bishop e7 which of the two is the better move do we have a good game here still yes indeed because we can go e5 attack the knight it must go to d5 and here we have the very fun bishop backs up to d2 which looks very odd but the reason we play this is their knight is now very susceptible to a c4 attack. So what will black do here? Their best try is likely c5, trying to attack us. But we can play c4, attack their knight. They must back up. And here, we're actually going to trade bishop captures and now queen g4. And the question stands, what does black do about this threat? If they just try to castle, then bishop h6. This is pretty bad, they must play g6 here, at which point you can capture the rook, or simply knight c3 developing might be even better, and this is just a complete domination of their position. And if instead they try g6 first, which might be a little better, then here, what do we do? Keep developing. We can now just play knight c3, we can go probably knight f3 here, potentially long castle or short castle if you want to go that way. All these positions are fantastic. So back here, what is actually black's best move? It is knight e4. And while it is the best move, black still must be extremely careful. Here, you can back the bishop up, but I like the line h4 here. Reason being, if they ever trade here, which I'll take a look at right now, after we capture back, although our pawns are now doubled, g5 is helpful as an attacking idea, and we open up the h file, and essentially here, what we will be doing is we're going to try to develop knight c3, queen with the d2, long castle, and start a massive attack against black. So what will black do here? The most common try is e6, immediately attack the pawn, we can simply develop and defend knight f3, if they attack again with bishop e7, black says, oh, I want the pawn, we can just go queen d2. Our plan is working out, the pawn is defended, let's say now d5, very typical. What do we do? We keep developing, knight c3, the plan is to long castle. And after c5 here, you can trade, let's say capture, bishop will likely uh, take back, long castle by us. But why hasn't black castled yet, you might be asking. If black castles, is this a good move or bad move? Very bad move, because we now play e4. Striking in the center, black must be extremely careful here, they cannot take because then their queen's lost and they end up losing a rook. If they try to push up the d4, then now queen f4. And our attack is going wonderfully. We're gonna play queen over to h4, get a big checkmate threat. Black must play extremely carefully to even survive here. And are we dominating? Yes, we are. And if they don't castle, they instead play like knight c6 here, which if you're asking is their best try, once again, e4, extremely strong here. Black is pretty awkward because they can't really castle here, but also casting long isn't that great either. So black is just stuck with an awkward position. Are we doing great here? Yes, we are. So let's look at another try here, uh, g6. Um, from this position is likely their best try. But the good thing here is that your plan literally does not change. We can go knight c3, 
Black will develop, Bishop g7, Queen up to d2. Our plan is just straight up not changing, and after castles here, long castles by us, once again, the same rotation of Queen f4, Queen h4, and this attack is, is it stoppable? Yes, but it's going to be quite difficult for them. d6 is most common. We can now play knight of three, keep developing. Let's say knight c6. Now is a good time to play queen over to f4. The key rotation is playing out well, and after, let's say, I don't know, rook e8, we can play a queen over to h4, attack, h5 is their only try to survive here, and we can now take on passant, also you make fun of your opponent too, which is always good, and at this point, yeah, I mean, black is surviving after bishop f6, but like knight g5 here, the attack is going to keep on rolling, black must be very careful, and do you have a fantastic position? Yes, you do. And back here, before we cover the best move, they have one more option, which is h6, and once again, this is not a good option, provoking the bishop just isn't that great, and after we back up to f4, let's say d5 now, we do have to change our plan a little bit, but is it really bad for us? Just no, it's still good after e3, let's say c5 here now, a key move is knight d2, why? Because you want to immediately get rid of their very powerful knight in the center, and after, let's say this trade, takes, takes, you're doing great, development's easy, you can still long castle here, and I mean, yeah, black is just kind of sad. But what is black's best try here? That is c5. Why is this their best try? They open up their queen to come to either like a5 or potentially b6 and they attack us immediately. Here we must push up to d5 right away and black has two main options here, those being queen b6 which is the main line and also d6 which is a pretty good sideline. If they play this I recommend queen up to d3, just attack their knight, force them to make a decision. If they trade then after pawn takes back, this is very similar to all of the other positions. Also, their pawn is attack, which might be really good for us. And what to do here, our plan is basically the same as before. Knight c3, long castles, we're doing great. Instead, bishop f5 is likely their best, most challenging try because x-rays can be scary, but not really here because g4. Fun move, attacking their bishop, they cannot capture because then that is a free knight. So what do they do here? Likely bishop backs up to g6 is their best move. A keen eye might catch knight takes f7 because of this, but after queen takes, knight takes, and queen backs up to f3, their knight really just cannot go anywhere, and at the end of the day, we're gonna have two pieces for a rook and a pawn, which favors us by quite a lot, so bishop back to g6 is their best move, and what to do from here, we keep pushing, h5 attacking their bishop, they can capture, pawn takes back on g6, they have to take with the f pawn, because once again, they cannot take with h because of this, uh, Nice pin we have there, so f pawn takes back, and here after f4 attacking their knight, where can it go? Not here, not here, not here, must back up to f7, which is just gross, and here uh, we have so many great ways to play, pawn g5 is likely the best, just putting a gigantic hold on their position, are you dominating? Yes. So that was d6, but their best move is queen b6. Attack in b2, which I will be honest is a little awkward for us to defend, so do we defend it? No. We play knight d2, and here we're going to get in a kind of gambit. We're attacking their knight in the center, their best move is to trade on g5. If they take on d2, you must remember, don't take the queen, take with the bishop. And after, queen takes on b2, yeah we're down a pawn, but honestly we have complete compensation, because after like knight of 3, is us being down a pawn really felt? No, it's just not, and is black's queen completely useless, and do they have like no development at all? Yes and yes. And after, let's say, d6 here, we can take the center, e4, let's say bishop g4 here, black can try to get some development, but rook b1. And their b7 pawn is left hanging, so after takes, or if they try to take, then uh, bishop c3, and their queen's actually going to get trapped very fast here, so their best move is to back up all the way to f6, and after rook takes b7, this is like very, very bad for them, because after knight d7, we're not winning immediately, but after bishop b5, I mean, the amount of pressure we have on them is just horrible. Black can just keep trying to defend with like rook d8, but bishop a5, and uh, this is just complete death for them. So that is if they capture, but if they take on g5 with their knight, 
we're going to take back with the pawn now black can take on b2 here is it better maybe very slightly for them but honestly we have the dominating move here g6 and i would be surprised if you were not winning in at least like 60 or 70 percent of your games here because one they cannot take with the pawn because then that's a free rook so they have to take with their f pawn so now their structure is completely messed up yeah we're down two pawns is it felt once again no we go e3 is our queen useless yes is our development great yes and after like let's say d6 we can go bishop d3 here attack this guy if they do nothing we can capture once again taking advantage of the pin we have here king must walk over and we can just back our bishop up we're doing completely awesome here. So instead of that, their best try here is likely bishop f5 to try and prevent that. What do we do? We can counterattack their queen, rook b1. Attack their queen. If they back up to like f6 here, this is not great because rook takes on b7 now. Uh, we're only down one pawn, but honestly, are pawns the most important thing here? No, it's the fact that their position is horrible in just about every single way, even though they're up a pawn. Uh, if they try to take again with queen takes a2, what is their material count right now? Black is up three entire pawns. Is it felt? No, it's not. e4, attacking their bishop. Black almost always plays bishop back to c8 here, trying to keep one extra pawn and stay greedy, but now knight c4, and although it looks insane here, and although it might not look completely certain, their queen is trapped. But why actually is that? Rook a1 is inevitable and their queen just has no way out. If they try queen back to a6 here, uh, then we have just simply rook a1, and yeah, their queen cannot go anywhere, it's trapped. Their best try is likely queen a4, going back this way, but here, how do we win? We have an insane tactic. Knight takes d6, check, this is awesome. Attacking their king, what can they do? They must capture, and now bishop b5, check. Are we dominating? Yes, we are. Queen takes, rook takes. We're up material, but honestly, more than that, their king is still terrible. We are dominating. And before you go, there are two other lines that you should know real quick. They're not that complicated, but you should know them. If black tries d5 here right away, do you want to trade? No, because you don't want to release the tension you have here. You simply want to play e3. If black provokes you, do you trade now? Yes, you do. And after takes, takes, h6 is always a waste of time. So e6 is likely better for them. And from here, you have a very easy game. Bishop d3, your development is super easy. Bishop b7, knight d2, everything is flowing supernaturally. The thing you want to know here is f4. Sharing a lot of DNA of stonewall setups, your knight is now going to, uh, or after c5, you play c3, solidify your center, your knight will go to f3, land itself on e5, at which point are you dominating? Yes, because your knight will simply be just an extremely powerful piece that black really cannot do anything against. And the other line I have for you is the immediate g6, and if they play this, then you do want to trade, because after pawn takes back, this pawn setup is pretty bad, and if you wait one moment, then sadly bishop g7 defending and you kind of lose a lot of your potential so you trade right away and then after e3 here black will likely just keep developing what do you do you keep developing as well be a very fun way being g3 here taking advantage of the fact that you have your dark square bishop gone so you put all your pawns on dark squares a nice positional concept and after let's say castles we keep developing bishop g2 d5 knight e2 well, I can try f5 here, but it's just a sad position. Their bishop is looking at complete granite. And after we castle, we can quickly go c4 here in a number of variations. And are we doing very well? Yes, we're not quite winning, but we have a nice position. All right, thank you so much for watching. Shout out to my one member so far, Miki. Members pick the next opening video. I hope you have a great day. Subscribe, like, do all that stuff, and I will see you next time.